Um, quick show of hands, who's been here for past ebook summits? Good, okay, so broken record. You've, you've heard this before, but hopefully some, uh, some a, little, a little more news. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna talk to you briefly sort of about the uh, licensing authentication landscape and where the co-op wants to go and hopefully invite some of you to join us on that journey. Um, uh, before I start, just, um, uh, so I use four criteria when I'm looking at uh, a solution around authentication. Uh, um, so one is, it, is it privacy compliant? Um, so when you're authenticating, are you only sharing information that's essential to that transaction and not leaving private information? Is it secure? So that's distinct from private, right? So in sharing that information, are you doing it in a way that only the people you're sending to are getting it? And then these other two are maybe a little new for you. Um, is the solution vendor specific? So if it is, I'm super not really interested in that. It might be expedient, like you have an ILS, you get it integrated, but uh, it doesn't work at scale for lots of other people who are not using an ILS, and it ends up get, uh, all of us getting into silos that are really hard to get out of and add extra costs. And then finally, um, is it a solution that is restricted just to the library silo, or is it a solution that is actually more broadly applicable than just library content? Um, uh, so those are kind of the lens through which I look at this, this issue of like, how are we authenticating our patrons. Um, so in the past, you've heard us flag uh, one of the popular ways of, of patrons getting access to things is SIP, right? Um, uh, those who don't know, SIP was a protocol for self-checkout machines that suddenly morphed into, hey, we're going to authenticate everybody for everything with this. Um, and as you've heard in the past, uh, certain vendors' uh, ILS implementations of SIP uh, were super not privacy compliant. Like when you talk to that interface, you were getting addresses, all sorts of other per, uh, personal details that just didn't need to be part of that transaction. So that's been one of the problems with that. Um, and at the co-op, one of the things we tried to do, so we have this uh, sort of standalone service called Kappa, which allows some of the libraries who didn't have a SIP interface to provide a SIP-like thing, but it really was just around, hey, give me a barcode and I'll give you a thumbs up. So it was privacy compliant in that regard, but it wasn't super robust because there was no pain involved. Um, we also have tried to do that with Evergreen, sort of, sort of take the SIP interface and really reduce what it's, uh, what it's spewing out. Um, but the problem that we're encountering is that vendors are coming back saying, hey, barcodes are not enough. You need barcodes and pins, which makes sense, right? Like uh, just using a barcode, like, I mean, those are guessable. There's not, that's not a particularly great way to validate anybody. Our problem is that SIP is not a secure protocol. Like SIP was intended to go over a LAN from a, a self-checkout machine to a server within a network. It was not meant to be sent over the internet. So as soon as you're doing barcodes and pins over, the, over that kind of connection, literally anybody along that way who can intercept that traffic now had that information. That's a security issue. So, so uh, uh, right now it's primarily Linda and Hoopla are pushing that, saying, hey, you've got a choice of uh, SIP, but you have to give us barcodes and pins. And we're going like, no, uh-uh, that's not okay with us. So um, the only other option they're giving us right now is Patreon API. So the, some of you are running ILSs that support Patreon API. Lucky you. Um, <laughs> for everybody else in the room who's not locked into that specific vendor, we don't support Patreon API because it's vendor specific, right? Um, now that said, uh, Patreon API, I'd like to give it some credit, so it's a reasonably modern uh, web-based uh, uh, API, uh, uh, authentication API. So it uh, is doing REST-like transactions. Uh, you can secure it over HTTPS. So you can uh, specify the privacy, you can, set, you can secure it, is it vendor specific? Uh huh. So on that front, not so great. And is it uh, applicable outside of the library realm? No. Nobody outside the library realm knows how to talk to Patreon API. It is very much a siloed kind of thing. So from our perspective, it represents sort of not an end point, but probably an interim. So we are developing a Patreon API like like emulation just to bridge the sort of next 12 months or so, so that people can keep authenticating, it's secure and private. But um, from our perspective, if we just did that and then said, job done, 
uh, we are stranding ourselves in a territory that I don't want to be stranded in. So um, we'll do that, and because we do open source, that's reasonably easy for us to do. Um, but I think longer term, where we're hoping to take the conversation is towards uh, open standards authentication endpoints, right? So when you talk open standards and, and authentication uh, on, uh, online, there's sort of four big ones that have emerged over the last decade or so that are sort of built to do internet scale, they're mature, and they're, uh, they're not owned by a single corporation, they're owned by a standards body. So nobody can like corral you in. Um, and these are, so SAML, uh, Security Assertion Markup Language. Um, this is ubiquitous throughout post-secondary and lots of other sectors, uh, and used by many uh, uh, licensed vendors within that sector, um, and, and in fact, many within our public library sector, that, uh, the content providers. So SAML, um, OpenID and OpenID Connect, which are not identical to kind of uh, variations. Um, uh, something called OAuth, which is slightly different beef, and, and, and then something called CAS, Central Authentication Service. So these are sort of like four competing, they all have merits, they all have uh, you know, pluses and minuses, but for all of them, they, are, they show up in our list of vendors do this, they can be secured, they can be private, they are not owned by a vendor, and they can work for licensed content, and what's exciting for me, a whole host of other stuff that we're not currently doing. And so for me, this represents sort of libraries sort of going from, hey, we're content providers to we're content providers and potentially lots of other services that we can integrate and give access to patrons to. So um, in terms of our, uh, 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 how we want to move forward with this, so we're uh, hoping to sort of do a small pilot uh, in the fall uh, probably with, against Sika uh, to stand up a server that's uh, um, uh, hopefully going to support actually multiples of these. So there are uh, server distributions that you don't have to actually just uh, uh, anchor your horse to one of these. You can actually say, oh, I'll put a server and it'll talk SAML, it'll talk OAuth, it'll talk OpenID Connect. So you get the best of all those worlds. You don't, uh, and you only have to be one server, but you can authenticate against any of those. So we're hoping to do a little pilot around that. Um, and, and see how that goes. Uh, and so that will involve us integrating with SIG on one end, uh, Evergreen, and on the other end with a vendor. Uh, we're, we're likely going to talk to EBSCO host because they're super familiar with this given their experience within PostSec. Um, as part of that, we're also hoping to sort of enlist other libraries uh, in a little working group, sort of uh, start to flesh out what are some of the other use cases we could be looking at. Like, what are our, some of the other digital services that libraries might want patrons to get authenticated access to, as so either applications or specific platforms, and really flesh that argument out. Because the more of those that we can concretely identify, the more the case gets stronger for like, let's go towards this open standards way away from the ad hocery. Um, I guess one last thing I'll, I'll just note, uh, uh, the, the sort of dark horse in the room is easy proxy. So, um, and there's a couple of other barcode matching, uh, uh, IP matching. So, um, easy proxy is actually fairly good in, in regards to uh, privacy and security, right? Like, uh, basically, all it's saying back to vendors is this person's from this uh, IP address and they did some authentication on this other end that they don't get to have uh, access to. Um, so, it, you know, it's not a bad solution, and to the extent to which uh, you have that in place and the vendors allow you to keep it in place, great. Um, I don't think it uh, fills the other two categories that I have in the sense it's not, it is controlled by a vendor, in this case, OCLC, who went from free or almost free to you're not paying an FT headcount per year on that. I wasn't super happy about that one. But then in addition to that, um, it is a little bit limiting in terms of what it provides access to. It works really well for the paradigm of sort of uh, passing people through to URL-based stuff content. Doesn't work so well from the perspective of, hey, I want to log this person into a different service and then persist that because in terms of rewriting URLs, some of those services, this doesn't really like that. So uh, if you've got it and it's working for you, great. My guess is if our sector goes anywhere like how post-secondary has gone, that's not going to be on the table that much longer, right? Like, this is why within the post-sec world, this conversation is already quite far along, because the content vendors there are just like, hey, 
IP based stuff, this is not securing our content. Our content is bleeding out all over the, the internet. We've got sign up and all these other things. You need to move towards some sort of method that we can rely on that it is this person who's validated at your organization to get it. Um, so yeah, is it going to be there forever? I don't know. I'm, I'm anticipating not and trying to move us to a way where we can still keep all of our values intact and enable additional services. But yeah, you know, who knows? Um, anyways, uh, that's a lot of info, no slides, but the good news is this is all in a paper that I'm just uh, going to publish today. Uh, uh, it'll, there'll be a link in the licensing business function group, so if you want to sort of get a better handle on it. Um, I also plan to publish it in the, um, uh, the library and IT discussion group because I think authentication is one of those places where both these groups really need to get together on this discussion. So you have the need for it in terms of providing your patrons access to stuff, and the IT folks are usually the ones providing that infrastructure and also own some of those other requirements around that. So I'm hoping like by pushing into both of those, we can have a discussion about it. And you know, I would join you, uh, sorry, invite you to join in that discussion, and hopefully by the fall when we start to get this going, invite some of you to participate in a, a working group on some of these things. So, uh, I think that's it. Uh, questions? So where can we get paper and what's the uh, it? It'll be on, uh, I'll publish it to the licensing business function group on the co-op. So if you're in that, which hopefully you are, if you're here, uh, there'll be a link in there in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, uh, earlier how uh, So, um, for for the, for a few reasons that I was mentioning, let's, okay, sorry. Um, so the question is, if we're going to emulate uh, Patreon API, why don't we just do that and then be done with it all? Um, so my answer to that is like, so first of all, I don't like to um, write code that somebody else. Uh, controls the specification for, right? So there's literally nothing stopping III to say, you know, behind the scenes, this is how it works. The, the III spec isn't public, right? I actually have to break the law to write something that emulates that, right? I had a vendor send that document to me. So I'm now writing code to emulate a private API that I can't actually get access to. So yeah, for that very reason, <laughs> like, this is not a good law. Um, but then on top of that, like I just think, uh, I, so first of all, Patreon API, if you look at the list of licensed products in BC, it isn't super ubiquitous in terms of its uh, uptake, right? There's only four content vendors we can find who actively support that. Compare that with uh, seven on, on the SAML side and 11 or 12 on the Easy Proxy side. So already there are other solutions that are ahead in terms of adoption. But then on top of that, when you look outside, again, of licensed content, uh, Patreon API just doesn't show up. It's like, uh, it's not to say you couldn't integrate another product with it, but like if I'm standing up a SAML server, so right away, uh, content li uh, sorry, code libraries for pretty much every major computing language exists to communicate with that, plus like existing products on the uh, on the interwebs, uh, you know, so uh, 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 file sharing stuff uh, like uh, Dropbox and things like that. Uh, LinkedIn and other ones already have uh, integrations with it, right? So as soon as I stand up, nobody's having to do any work on there. We just talk to them, boom, it's integrated. If those become things you want to offer, either internally or to, to patrons. So it just gets you way further ahead in that conversation, plus you're not tied to a vendor who may or may not have your best interests at heart. Okay, thanks.